All right, so in today's tutorial, I want to show you a mock-up technique that is going to blow your mind away and it's going to be so useful for you, you have no idea. Now, at the very end, I'm going to show you why this is so powerful and yeah, just check it out for yourself. Let's go. Now, basically what we want to do is we want to place a logo or photo or basically any kind of image on another background or texture or whatever. In this case, we want to put this logo, which is my own logo, right over here on this guy's t-shirt. But of course, we don't want it to be a flat logo. We want to make the logo follow the wrinkles so that it actually looks realistic on his t-shirt. Now, what you want to do is you want to open the logo in a separate document and then you want to hit Command Shift S or go to file and save as and you want to save this uh, logo as a separate affinity photo document so i'm gonna call this one um, new logo icon embedded and i'm gonna hit save now we're gonna go back to our photo and what we want to do now this is very important to place the logo onto the t-shirt you want to go up to file and you want to hit place and make sure that when you do this, so let me cancel, let make sure that the placement policy is set to embedded and not to linked. So hit place and find the image or find the file that you just created. So I've got my new logo right over here and I'm going to hit open. Now what we want to do is just drag this thing somewhere around. So somewhere around here, this looks pretty good to me. And you can see right now on the right side of our, right side of our screen that we've got our uh, .affinity photo file um, opened and it is an embedded document. So what we want to do is um, position it somewhere like, yeah, somewhere that it kind of matches the perspective of this photo, but we don't have to be too precise with this. So something uh, uh, like this looks pretty fine to me. Real quick, I've just launched the Ultimate Photo Manipulation Brush Bundle 2.0, which makes photo manipulation super fun and super easy for everybody. It doesn't matter whether you're a beginner or an expert user of Affinity Photo. You'll be able to create northern lights, fireworks, smoke, clouds, comets, stars, a moon. You you name it you'll be able to add this to your photos in just a click now the great thing is that I've included over 20 tutorials in order for you to get the most out of this brush bundle and this Black Friday you will get a whopping 73% off so if you're interested make sure to check the link down below in the video description because you will love it all right let's get back into the content and now we want to create a displacement filter but before we're gonna do that we got to do some preparations so let's hide the logo for now and i'm gonna select my background layer and i'm gonna press command j to create a duplicate now there are a couple of things that we want to do we want to desaturate it we want to increase the contrast and we want to blur it so let's start off by desaturating it i'm gonna press command u on the keyboard um, which is the shortcut for the hsl adjustment layer and i'm gonna drag the u uh, saturation all the way down then I'm gonna clip it to my layer by just dragging and hovering over it then I want to um, blur my layer so I'm gonna select my pixels layer um, which is the model in this case I'm gonna go to my layer effects and I'm gonna uh, create a Gaussian blur and why we do this is because why we do this is because we don't want to see any texture in the photo but we do want to see the wrinkles so something around this looks fine. Maybe I might tweak it a little later. Now what I want to do next is create a levels adjustment layer to increase the contrast of this um, image that we've created. So let me zoom out a bit. I'm going to select my HSL adjustment layer because once I press command L right now, you will see that the levels adjustment layer will be automatically clipped to our uh, image. And that is because I selected a clipped layer already. Now what we want to do is increase the black levels a whole lot until we can very well see the um, the wrinkles. I think I've blurred it too much, so I'm gonna go back into my layer effects and reduce the blur a little bit, so something like this looks fine. Let's go back into our levels adjustment layer. Let's increase the brightness a little bit so that we have some nice contrast going on and increase the blacks, something like this looks fine to me. All right, let's press Command-0 to zoom out and there we've got our image. 
Now, next step, we want to uh, show our logo, which is right over here. And now we want to create a live displacement filter. So we're going to go to our live filters here at the bottom. We're going to scroll down a bit and there we find displace. Now, what we want to do is you want to set the load method to, um, yeah, which one works best. But I think in this case, it is going to be a red and green uh, offset. Click on load map from layers beneath and just drag the slider a little bit to see, uh, to see the effect. So this looks like this. Um, let's try the other one. So bold three times three. Let's create this uh, layer effect. And this actually looks pretty good. The only problem with this one is that you get this weird um, yeah, weird edges, let's say, and with this one, um, a lot less. So we just figure out which one works best for you. I think this one works pretty okay in this case. Let's not go too crazy on this one. So let's go for something like this. Let's check the other one because I think I just like a little bit more how this folds around the edges. Um, yeah, let's take take this one for now and let's cross this off. All right. So once we hide our, um, let's say, displacement layer, which is this one. Once we hide this one, you can see that the logo actually folded around our wrinkles already. But obviously, it just still lo looks very flat and unrealistic. So next step, what we want to do is we want to um, reduce the opacity just a little bit. So select your logo and reduce the opacity to around let's say 80 percent or 80 something percent and we want to create a, this um uh, blend ranges but the problem with blend ranges right now is if you have a live filter um clipped to your layer blend ranges don't work as you can see so the live filter kind of overrules the blend layer now there is an amazing workaround so let's actually reset this one there is an amazing workaround which you should know and i'm gonna give it to you for free completely free um what you want to do is you want to group your uh, icon layer so i'm gonna press command g to group it make sure that it is inside of the group um, like this and now you want to set the blend ranges onto the group so you're gonna press the cogwheel right over here and you can play around with the blend ranges and now you can see that we can actually um, perform some blend ranges on this image now you just want to drag around your sliders until you get uh, a nice uh, image that you like so maybe something like Something like this looks pretty fine to me and let's cross this off. Now, the most powerful thing about this thing is that we have created an embedded document. Now, let me show you what this actually means. If we double click on our icon, double click right over here, you will see that Affinity Photo actually opens the uh, embedded document in a separate file. Now, if we want to change out this logo, so let's say I like this um, design quite a lot, but let's hide it for now. And let's um, add this design. We can even stretch it out a bit, but we don't have to. If I go back to my document right now, you can see that Affinity Photo just changes the logo and keeps everything. So the displacement map and the, the, the everything keeps it in place and you can just swap out the logos however you want. Now, if that doesn't blow your mind, I, doesn't, I don't know what does. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I'm sure it's going to be super, super, super uh, beneficial to you. Um, yeah, just set it up once and you can change logos, whatever you want. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Ciao.